So Albatross uh, Music Festival is the first outdoor music festival of its kind uh, in the sense that it's uh, representing a lot of Asians, right? So how do you feel about being a part of that? I am very proud to be part of Albatross Music Fest. Um, I think it's very empowering for all these Asian acts to be under one roof and one stage. So I'm proud to be representing my culture too. So you kind of debuted around the time that um, internet was really making like really open up a lot, open up a, ah, opening up a lot of gates for Asian artists. But you also kind of caught the tail end of the more traditional um, kind of way for artists to get noticed out there. What would you say is the difference now, and um, and how beneficial is it to have the internet specifically for Asian artists and their visibility? Well. The industry is very different now because it's more about streaming. Um, we used to rely a lot on radio, but now streaming is the thing. And um, it is beneficial because everyone around the world can hear you and they can discover you. It's not just one part, not just one country anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm very good with my Instagram account, Elisa Strata, at Elisa Strata. <laughs> Yeah, so I've, I, I find that I've managed to grow my following more worldwide, mm -hmm. international, because of Spotify mm -hmm. and Instagram and the digital world. North America is your base, it's where you started, um, that it's become more competitive as a result and if it's, as an Asian artist yourself, having done work in the Philippines, um, whether or not it was easier there just based on your nationality, and your, sorry, not nationality, your ethnicity. I feel like this industry's always been competitive. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think that my culture has actually helped um, mm -hmm. with the competition just because it helps me stand out because right, yeah. <laughs> it, it's different enough you mm -hmm. know I would imagine it's not necessarily the easiest thing for an artist of color especially in um, I guess in a smaller kind of market here in Canada as opposed to the United States mm -hmm. um, to kind of grow their um, their brand as to say but um, of course, you mentioned earlier on that the internet has really helped you with that. So um, I'm just wondering, like, whether or not it was easier, easier in the Philippines, yeah. as opposed to here. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's easier in the Philippines or here. I feel like it's, it's the competition is the same. Right. I mean, in the Philippines, they do tend to embrace you more, mm -hmm. just because you've managed to knock down the doors in Canada, North America. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very proud of that fact. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like it's it's just as com competitive in both worlds. Mm -hmm. Coming in here, which act are you most excited to see? I'm excited to see Far East Movement, mm -hmm. like a G6. <laughs> you know I'm going to be dancing to that song. Yes. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, you mentioned earlier using um, the social media, and you said you're growing social media. And nowadays, we're oversaturated with content like YouTube and everything. You were saying Spotify, everyone's just releasing albums. Mm -hmm. And um, what would you say to someone who's just starting out? How, how can they stand out with all the oversaturated content, like too much content we have now? What would you say to someone who's just putting out their stuff? Be persistent. Um, if it's something that you really love to do, keep creating your content, keep making it the best that you possibly can, and you know, everything will fall into place.